here's a, a rotating disc, seen edge on, this is the velocity field, this is the approaching side and the receding side, beautifully orthogonal kinematic axes, and the major and the, the zero velocity axis here. If you imagine shearing this galaxy, then you shear the velocity field with it. And so if you shear it in this direction, what happens is that you open up this right angle, and this, this angle alpha between the, the axes of, ma of maximum and minimum velocity uh, opens up beyond 90 degrees, and that's a very direct measurement of the shear. All you have to do is ask how much you have to close it back in to make it 90 degrees, and that's how much it's been sheared at. So that gives you a perfect measurement of the shear in this direction. If you have two of these galaxies, one of them aligned in a slightly different way, then you could also measure the shear component in the opposite direction. So with very few galaxies, you're able to measure the shear very accurately in this case. The shape noise can really be beaten down considerably. And of course, galaxies don't have quite such ideal velocity fields, but they're pretty damn circular when you look at their rotation properties. Right. So this is, uh, again, something which SKA might be able to do um, in the future. And then the final idea is to go away from shear and to go straight to magnification mapping. Um, and this is something which will be talked about more in, uh, on Friday. Um, so when you have magnification, what happens is that you, you cannot see the, the brightening of individual sources because they have a very broad luminosity function. But you do get a shift of the luminosity function. If you have a luminosity function like this here, then, bright galaxy, then galaxies will be both brightened but also spread apart as a, function of, uh, as, a, as a result of the magnification of the whole sky. And so either the sky dilution factor wins or the flux boost factor wins. And so for a shallow luminosity function, you actually lose sources, but for a steep luminosity function, you gain sources. And this is something we can try to measure. And this is a, a slide from Henrik Hildebrandt's nice work on C of HDLS deep, where they show with uh, Lyman break dropouts at various redshifts that you both get this, the regime where you end up with more galaxies, but you can also get to the regime where the galaxy density is diluted. So this is a very convincing, to me, demonstration that this is real lensing magnification going on and not some clustering effect. Uh, because you see both both sides of the effect. But Henry will talk more about this in the frame. And then the final thing Mali talked about this already is the idea that you can go beyond shear and incorporate higher uh, higher order distortions into your measurements. Okay. Last point is ground versus space. Eventually we all want to do this from space uh, because you can get the, the better image quality and the stability that you, you need to really get the, the highest fidelity measurements that you might need. Um, you end up making different compromises than you do from the ground. Um, you trade the diffraction limit for the seeing. Uh, you, trade the fraction, you trade stability for the fact that you have a smaller telescope, so the grasp, the survey power is a bit lower usually. And there's a temptation to make the filters as wide as you can uh, in order to catch all those photons with a, with a fairly small telescope in space. And so here's one final cautionary note. This is if you have a very wide photo, such as at some point was proposed in Euclid, then you, within the whole filter band, you, on, the, on the blue end, you end up with a, a point spread function that's maybe 0.18 arc seconds wide. On the red side, you might go as high as 0.3. And so if you're in the extreme situation where you don't know what the color is of a galaxy, and you correct the shear of a galaxy, which has an axis ratio of 2 to 1, by various amounts, assuming that it's being measured by the middle, by some average point spread function, if you correct it by the wrong one, you can make errors of many, many percent. And so again, it's one of those things you really have to get under control, and if you want to measure shears to a fraction of a percent, then you really have to be able to say whether your point spread function was 0.24 or 0.23 or 0.25 or seconds wide, and that really requires understanding the SED of that galaxy to a degree that, again, it's not really easy to get. So, again, one of those things we have to worry about. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's certainly not. Okay, so, I stole all these from Nick, since he, uh, he actually gave a nice If you blinked, then you might have seen that Nick presented survey all, uh, all surveys in about a minute. And so uh, there's a whole bunch of different projects going on, much more going on. At the end, we're going to simply do the whole sky, and then we'll be done.